Uh, dear everyone, especially those wanting to know how to be bold in scary times. The times for Audre Lorde and Pat Parker were also scary times, and they wrote directly into them, which is what keeps their work so timeless and valuable. From having known and loved them both, I can tell you they were fierce and angry at times, and they were also funny and sensual, tender, protective, and deeply compassionate. Both believed in educating people by revealing truths from their own lived experience and intense passion. I met Pat in 1970. Pat and I met Audrey in 1971. Pat and I traveled around together giving readings in the early 70s, and all three of us spent time in each other's houses. Um, as all three of us traveled often to the opposite coast doing our poetry readings. We were poets for common causes, feminist and lesbian, anti-racist, anti-violence, and also part of other movements for liberation. As Pat said in in one of her poems, I have placed this body in many movements. Now, you listen, I have a dream too. It's a simple dream to bring all of herself into the world. We all learned from Pat's direct and often stunning honesty, her decision to use metaphor sparingly, her use of her own life and experience, which placed her in a central position to address some of the most difficult of subjects not only police murder, uh, but also marital rape, child sexual abuse, femicide, and, and love, lots of love, and parenting as a lesbian. Hers was often among the first voices for all these subjects. Pat's family wanted her to become a lawyer. Her lawyerly mind shows up in a poetic that is often an exploratory argument leading to a logical conclusion. For instance, two voices arguing about freedom of speech, white students saying, speak, let them speak, while blacks, Jews, and a few whites say, don't let the fascists speak. And the poet concludes that the Supreme Court decreed it is illegal to scream fire in a theater as it causes people to panic and do harm. Pat was a fighter, literally, and fistfights were part of the bar culture that she loved. Hard to exaggerate how brassy and brave she was. For instance, going with a white lover, both dressed for show on a Sunday morning to a crowded Denny's and sitting in a very visible booth, necking. Over on the East Coast, Audrey didn't live in a collective household as we lesbian activists did on the West Coast. She belonged to a close-knit group of lesbians who were writers, teachers, and psychologists. And so she also had sisterly support. Audrey was a vivid person. She wore head wraps and for a while, bright dashikis, lots of necklaces and big rings, or in a more butch mood, black leather head to foot. She sorely missed the, the lushness and vivacity of the Caribbean and often burst into lavish descriptions of the odors and tastes of open markets. She was very generous and caring. Once in between rushing me to a reading in a blustery rainstorm and showing me her house, explaining the Kwanzaa materials in her dining room, she took me on a tour of my New York, as she called it, driving through a Manhattan that no longer exists, enthusiastically showing me street after street, each of which specialized in only one kind of wear, the street of goldsmiths, the one of fish markets, the clothing districts with rolling racks. I always imagined this was the one part of the US most like Europe and perhaps most like Mexico and the Caribbean and parts of Africa, all places she knew and loved. Audrey never accepted authority as real or right, including medical authority. After her first bouts with cancer and her mastectomy, she refused to wear a prosthetic breast and called the medical establishment the cancer industry. 
she sought alternative treatments in both Germany and Mexico and prolonged her own life way beyond her prognosis, using her own intuition for what would work best for her every inch of the way. She revealed a part of her poetic method one morning when she was staying with me and Paula Gon Allen and Paula asked her, Audrey, how do you do what you do? How do you come up with your new ideas? Audrey thought a moment and said, I throw myself at the wall. We all have that wall. It lives inside of us, a resistance that shuts out the unknown. We need the unknown now more than ever. It takes a different, but just as strong a kind of courage to break through, to attain it. But once through, the other side reveals a new wisdom or a method of survival. These two beautiful and tough poets who never thought of themselves as victims directly address the issues of their times, which remain the issues of our times. Again and yet again, they threw themselves at the wall and so must the rest of us. Love, Judy. <laughs>